knitting a shawl doesn't have to be difficult, and it shouldn't be reserved for pro knitters either. It shouldn't take you weeks to make, and loads of yarn either. All of these things sort of come with the territory with knitting shawls, but it doesn't have to. This shawl is easy, it knits up fast, and it doesn't take a ton of yarn. And the best part, you can make this even if you consider yourself kind of a beginner. Lion Brand Scarfy is the yarn of choice for this project for two reasons. Well, three really. First, the colorways are absolutely gorgeous. They have several to choose from, and they all have gorgeous color transitions. Second, it's a bulky weight yarn, but it's not really bulky. It has a nice drape, but it still works up fast. And third, it's a roving style yarn, which looks absolutely beautiful knitted up. You'll also need a US 10 or six millimeter circular knitting needle that's at least 24 inches long. That way you can fit the entire width of the project on the needle, no problem. As most do, this one starts with a long tail cast on. Go ahead and cast on four stitches. Then flip it and knit all four stitches. Flip it again, knit all four stitches again. And do this one more time so you have a total of three knit rows. To get this sort of leaning shape here at the top of the shawl, we use a clever combination of stitches, but they're actually pretty simple. Make sure the yarn is hanging down like this, then insert the needle purlwise and just slide it over. And that's all you do. That's called a slip one purlwise. And after that one, you'll KFB or knit front back. This is a really basic increase. To work that, act like you're knitting, but instead of sliding it off the needle, you'll swing it around and insert the needle in the back loop. Wrap the yarn, then knit it off. And knit the remaining stitches in this row. So with that KFB, you have increased your stitch count by one. And for the next row, row number five, you'll knit all stitches. Now you can't see the lean just yet, but you will after you have a few more repeats. And speaking of the repeat, what you need to do at this point is repeat rows four and five until you have 16 stitches on the needle, ending after you've completed a fourth row or one of those increase rows. When you get through that repeat, it'll look something like this and you can really see the lean. So there's generally no question whether you're in the increase row or not. So that's kind of a visual cue for you. Next, we need to do a little work on the opposite side, the little ridges that make up that outer portion of the pattern. From here, flip your work and we'll simply bind off a few stitches. So knit the first two, then pass the first loop over the last. Knit the next stitch and pass it over. Knit one more, and pass it over again. So that's a total of three stitches cast off and you can knit the remaining stitches in this row. Then flip it and work your usual fourth row repeat.
flip it, and knit your usual fifth row repeat. So this shawl comes together in two main sections. We have our increasing first section and a decreasing second section. The repeat for the first section is simple in practice, but it can kind of seem a little confusing at first, especially if you're looking at the written instructions. Think of it like this. We have four main sections to this portion of the pattern. The fourth row, which remember is the one with the KFB, followed by a fifth row, which is where you knit all stitches, which leads us into a repeat of those two rows, and finally a bind off row. So every time you reach a repeat row in the pattern, your stitch count will be three more than the previous repeat. Now, if your head is spinning just a little bit, don't worry. There's an even simpler way to look at this. You can easily count six little ridges since the previous bind off row. So when you see that, that's your cue to bind off three stitches. So all you're doing is repeating rows four and five until you can count six ridges from the last bind off row and then work your bind off again. See, it's much easier to wrap your mind around it that way, but I do encourage you to check out the pattern as well. You can view it completely free on my website, or if you prefer to have a copy in hand to print or save for later, you can pick up the PDF from my shop. I'll have a link to both options in the description below so you can do what works best for you. So you'll probably use up your first skein in this first section of the pattern. So when you're ready to add another, this is what you'll do. Normally, I like to add new yarn at the start of a row. I do find it a little bit easier that way, but I don't really want to add new yarn when I'm slipping and increasing. So instead, I'll work through that and a few more stitches and then add the yarn just in my regular knit stitch repeat. When you get to that point, just insert your needle like you're gonna knit the stitch, but loop the new yarn around the needle, pull that through to finish the stitch, knit a couple more stitches so it's nice and secure, then tie the two ends together for now. You can tidy up those ends later. So you'll need to work this repeat until you have 84 stitches on the needle. Remember, every time you complete a fourth row, you're increasing your stitch count by one. So you've got a little ways to go. When you have 84 stitches on your needle and you have just finished a fourth row, that'll get you set up for another bind off row. But this time we're moving into that second section of the shawl I was telling you about, the decreasing portion, and we'll do things a little different. So you should have your six little ridges here and be ready to bind off. This part's not new, but instead of binding off three stitches like you've been doing, you'll bind off six stitches instead. This will create more of an even point in the middle of your shawl and the remaining stitches will look kind of like a mirror of what we did in the first section. Then just go ahead and knit to the end of the row. All right, we're starting on the second row of the second section of the shawl. And this time we'll do a normal slip one purl wise KFB and knit to the end of the row. So nothing new here. And for row three, you'll knit all stitches. Again, nothing new. Now, just like we've done for all of the other sections in this shawl, we need to add a little bit of length before we can get to the next bind off row. So what you'll do is repeat rows two and three until you have 81 stitches on the needle. And another way to look at it is if you repeat those two rows, two and three, until you can count three ridges instead of six, like we did in the first section. And then you'll bind off six stitches again. So if you'd rather follow along with stitch counts and the written instructions, your stitch count will increase by three between each bind off row. But then of course, as you bind off six stitches, you're removing three as well. So it all works out to evenly decrease the shawl down so it looks exactly like it does in the increasing section 
just kind of a mirrored image. So work through that repeat until you have 12 stitches left on the needle. All right, with your 12 stitches here, go ahead and bind them all off. And of course, don't forget to weave in the ends. So the shape is pretty great on its own, but you can wet block it if you want a slightly better, more consistent shape, but it's really not necessary. Since you've gotten this far, would you mind doing me a small favor? Can you hit the like button for me? I mean, you probably wouldn't have watched it all if you didn't like it, but honestly, that quick little action will really help me out because it'll tell YouTube this tutorial is worth sharing to others. Want an ad-free experience? How about the ability to enjoy all Beoked content before anyone else? Members of my Patreon community not only get to watch all videos completely free of ads, but they also get the PDF for all new patterns. Choose the Insider Preview tier for these perks, or if you really love patterns, choose the Insider Plus tier to unlock an additional 76 classic Beehooked PDFs, as well as the entire archive of patterns released in 2021. Join my Patreon community today for all of these perks, as well as customized pattern support if you need it. You can cancel at any time if your financial situation changes, or if you simply change your mind. Links in the description below. If you still need a yarn fix after this one, don't worry, I have you covered. I have a few more videos for you to dive into. Happy knitting, and I'll see you in the next one.